Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Dean's Lecture Series at Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar. Some of you may still not know me, and so my name is Michael Trick, and I joined CMUQ as Dean on September 1st. Over my first few weeks in Qatar, I've been impressed by the kindness and hospitality of CMUQ, as well as the Qatari people. And so thank you. I feel very, very welcome here. And I believe this will be an exceptional academic year. It's a pleasure to introduce the second Dean's Lecture of the year. Over the years, the Dean's Lecture Series has featured some of the most influential thinkers in Qatar, and today's speaker certainly continues that tradition. His Excellency, Dr. Khalid bin Mohammed Altia, began his career as a fighter pilot in the Qatari Emiri uh, Air Force. He went on to study law, earning both his MA and PhD from Cairo University. His Excellency practiced law for several years in Doha before entering public service. In 2008, he held the post of Minister of State for International Cooperation. And in 2009, he was appointed the Acting Minister of Business and Commerce. In 2011, His Excellency was appointed Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and a member of the Council of Ministers. He went on to serve as Minister of Foreign Affairs until he was appointed Minister of State for Defense Affairs in January 2016. His Excellency will be speaking today about a topic that certainly affects all of us. Electronic attacks and their economic and social effects. His Excellency will take questions from the audience, but I ask members of the media to reserve your questions until after today's presentation. Please welcome and join me in welcoming the Minister of State for Defense Affairs, His Excellency Dr. Khalid bin Mohammed Al Atiya. Rahim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, allow me in the beginning to thank uh, Dean Trick and the rest of the faculty and staff of Carnegie Mellon for hosting me this afternoon. I am pleased uh, to be here amongst all of you. I'm especially pleased uh, to be uh, here amongst uh, a special uh, audience. Uh, discussing the topic of electronic cyber warfare and cyber attack and its effects on the economy, society, and the many other facts of statehood. I would like to keep my remarks as brief as possible because I'm much more interested in having a frank and open discussion with all of you than my own voice, hearing my own voice speak. As Dean Trick said and mentioned, I started my career as a fighter pilot in the Qatari Armed Forces. And as a young fighter pilot, I was in many instances either subject or witness to a real danger. I have flown in a hostile skies, been shot at, and had almost run out of fuel uh, when I was miles out of my base. However, the uh, commonly between, uh, between all the dangers that I, ha I, I and my, uh, many of my colleagues faced during those times was those dangers were tangible. We could see and feel the threat approaching and we were trained and equipped to combat them. I stand here before you today, many years later, as the Minister of State of Defense. And I can tell you that today, dangers are no longer tangible. We, have, we faced unconventional dangers that threaten the very fabric of our society. Extremists no longer target society with just bombs or other forms of weaponry. They have uh, uh, adapted their malicious method and are now targeting our young 
from behind a keyboard. Our economy are no longer just threatened by the change in oil price or the efficiency of its markets, but is now subject to change by the meddling of just one person with a computer and access to the internet. Talking about the good old days, I only used to be able to fly a fighter jet with two other pilots with me, 12 on the ground crew members, and a countless of mechanical engineers or crew member, and countless of the uh, and, and, and countless of sorry countless of mechanical engineers on site. Today, we only require one or two people in a vehicle with a laptop to do all of this. Unmanned aerial vehicles, ships, and on-ground machinery are carrying extremely advanced and sophisticated technology on board. We are able to go places, see things, and protect ourselves in ways we never could before. But this new capability comes with a price. We are becoming more precipitable to attack with only one click of a button. Our technologies is not protected properly, could be damaged in a way that would not only cause economic damage, but will endanger lives as well. The challenges we face are ever changed, but so are we. Through institutions such as Carnegie Mellon, we are developing our cyber capability to not only match, but in fact, surpass the capability of our enemies. We are creating enduring infrastructure that cater to our people and ensure their safety. We are building strategic relationship with nation and academy institution in an effort to progress our own capacity. I wanted to, represent, to uh, present you now with a case study. This is, of course, completely hypothetical, mind you. No truth to it whatsoever. Let's say that there were a number of state uh, actors, and this state actor decided to buy coats and besiege their wealthy small neighborhood state. They wanted to infringe on its sovereignty and control its domestic and sovereign fund for their own personal gain. They searched high and low for a way to legitimize and convince their own society of the besiegement, failing to find lawful means to do so, they concocted a plan to hack the national news agency of the small wealthy nation next door and attributed false statements to the head of state of the country. What followed was synchronized and systematic boycott and besiegement that separate families, disrupted trade, and caused an international political frenzy. An immediate aftermath of the hacking, confusion, and panic ensued, capitalizing on the confusion. The besieging states act on the false statements, wagoning on the very weak foundation they have built for themselves. What those countries didn't consider or respect was the intellect of their own people. Slowly but surely, evidence incriminating the state actors suffered to the public, surfaced, sorry, to the public. The uh, perpetrators were exposed for the entire world to see. The immediate effect of the cyber attack slowed the economy of the small state momentarily. It unsettled the society and dented the regional coherence. However, proving resilient, the people of the region came out in a solidarity that economy recovered and flourished due to the state diversified tactics and the society emerged unified behind the le its leadership. The plans of the besieging countries failed miserably, 
what they believed would topple the small state actually made it much, much stronger. So you see, cyber attack are very bad things, but their effects are not always bad, in this case at least. I have heard many labels be attributed to a cyber attack. I have heard it's being called cyber warfare, which of course in my current position raises all the alarm in my head. I have also heard it begin called cyber terrorism. Regardless, regardless of what is name, it is concealed behind it, is a real threat, and it should be dealt with seriously. We must focus our effort on developing our own human capital in matter involving cybersecurity and computer programming. We need to continue exploring strategic partnership that ensure the safety and security of our infrastructure and we must invest in research and development plan and progress our understanding of the ever expanding world of cyber intelligence again thank you for having me i am very happy to be here today and i look forward now for any discussion thank you